Okay, as I promised, we're back at it. Step number nine, we said. And so we are now at reshape and round the eye sockets, drawing the eyes you want to carve. Then we're going to carve the forehead and outline the eyebrows, going to carve the eyebrow details, going to carve the eyelids and eyeballs, and yada, yada, yada. Okay? So we're back to our pencil. I'm going to do it in pencil, and then I'll do it in pen. So we're going to reshape and round the eye socket. So I started with this number 11 flex cut that I got. You know, let me talk about flex cut for a minute. I, I like flex cut for certain of the tools they offer because it's it's got a flexible shaft. I can do that with this flex cut. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it offers me the flexibility of when I carve in and I carve out this flexes and it doesn't cut as much it doesn't splinter the wood as much as it cuts so for these flex cut gouges and V's I like them for that reason so having said that I use Helvy and I use Drake and I use OCC I even use Ramelson and some other brands uh, Mike Shipley I have some of those I'm looking back at my bag and then I use a couple of, of private brand knives. And so I, I'm not I'm not saying I promote one over the other. Now, <laughs> you want to pay me to say that? Maybe it might be a different story, but I doubt it. I'm going to use what I like using, and I'm going to enjoy using that. So I like Flex Cut. I've used them for a long time. They're they're relatively inexpensive for a beginner, and they'll last you a lifetime if you take care of it. I'm going to go from this one here to one slightly bigger. Slightly bigger as in got a wider one and it's got not quite 11 this is probably a 7 to a 9 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make those eye sockets a little bigger so I'm going to go I, I, the other one I went in to the eye socket to the note bridge of the nose now I'm just going to go out to the side and what I'm doing with this is just deepening it and making it wider and I know people say well how can you carve an eye when you've indented that in there and I'll show you and I'll show you what I do with them too as well. I may have to do one of these for Santa Claus face. I don't know. Maybe there's enough of them out there that everybody's done them and I don't have to do one, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe my, I think I got two or three loyal fans out there and maybe they'd like to see it. I'm, I'm kidding, I got a few more than two or three. And all I've done is just made that eye socket just a little bit bigger. I am not done with this step, but I'm do I'm I'm going to be making that even deeper a little bit later. But right now I'm just trying to make that eye socket a little bigger so that I have room to put that face and went in there where I want it to go. But now we're going to go back to step nine because we're still on step nine. All we've done is made this eye socket just a little bit bigger. Whenever you carve eyes, one of the things you have to remember, where is the tear duct? The tear duct is going to be the, the, the deepest part of the face. And so I usually like to go somewhere about right there and put in a tear duct. Again, when we talk about proportions, the head of a human is five eyes wide. One eye, then the two eyes makes three, and then the part between the edge of the eye out here and the, and the temple is another eye. So you roughly have five eyes wide. On caricature, we're constantly stretching that in and out and doing what we want. But at this point, I'm just gonna put my dot where I think the eye, the tear duct of the eye is gonna go. Make sure they're on the same plane because you don't want one down here and one up here. There's not a lot that you can't do with a caricature carving, but one of the things you want to keep true to is symmetry. What I don't want is eye with one eye is here and one eye is down here on, the, on, the, on this way. Two eyes don't always have to look the same, although a lot of people want to do their carvings with two eyes looking exactly the same. And I'm constantly saying that's not that necessary, but it's, it's a tough sell because when you screw up two eyes that are not the same, it's hard to get it to look right, but anyway. So from here, we have to make a decision on what kind of eye you want. When you carve eyes, 
Let me see if I can find a face stick here. When you carve eyes, thank you Dave for putting this out. When you carve eyes, you have to decide what they're doing. Are they looking at you? Are they looking straight at you? Are they looking just slightly off to the side? What kind of eyes are you doing? And I don't know that any of the other ones I have. Oh yeah, there we go. Next one. Here's another one by Her here's Harold Inlow. I apologize, no eyes on this one, so we'll scratch that one. Anyway, when you do eyes, you want to make sure that you don't have one eye going this way and one eye going that way. You want to make sure the eyes are looking the same. And so I could certainly take this and make them both look over here or look over here. I do that a lot on my carvings. But I think we're just going to do a regular generic eye. So the bottom eyelid, straight line. Does that look in the right spot? Yeah, it kind of does. So I just want a straight eye. Out here, the, out, the outside eyelid is going to overlap. So we're going to do a small eye, and that's one of the things you have to wonder. You have to you have to take into consideration is do the eyes have the right size for the carving? And if you'll notice real closely, this eye is a little bit smaller than this one. So I can go back in here and I can make this a little bit bigger. It looks chopped up when I do that because now I got a real thick line, but I can do that. And, and so from here down, you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 13, 14, 15, 16, 9, sorry. You know, you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You've got 8 different eyes. So don't, if you don't want to, don't make all of these the same. You notice how I started over here at 13 because I wasn't looking at the number. They don't have to be the same. Eyes do not have to be the same. In fact, I'm going to do this one with a little bit of rounded down here at the bottom. I want to do this one where I've got him looking over here. I've got this one where he might be squinting, and so he's just kind of looking that way. And we'll do this one where they're looking that way. Just know that whenever you do eyes, you don't want them too out of whack. In other words, you don't want them to be too crazy. This one's a tear duct, so it's going to be, and we're going to do this one like this, and we're going to do an eye like that. Kind of a, kind of a, I don't know what to, what to call this one. This one, he looks like he's a sad sack. That's what we would have said, he's a sad sack. Okay. We'll do another almost normal eye here. But we'll have a really big eye, almost like he's surprised. And I'll think about that last one. Anyway, one of the things that I do, I didn't do that one up there, did I? Sorry, coming back to number nine, I didn't finish that one. That one might look a little bit, a little bit wonky. And we'll make it work. One of the things that I like to do is outline them first before I start. I'll use a little, what I call a Wee V. This is a Ramelson brand. I try to stamp all my tools, my J E O, so I know they're mine wherever I'm at. Anyway, before you do eyes, make sure that you've sharpened your tools because if you don't, and this is the least bit dull, all you're going to do is crush. So take a few minutes, pause the video, go sharpen your tools, and make sure that this thing is sharp. I have two of them, so if I need to, I can switch out to one. I sharpen this one. I'm not sure if the other one's sharpened, but we'll... Uh, We'll figure it out. Anyway, I'm just going to start, and what I want to do, I want to start with this one first because I like this one. What I'm going to do is just outline with my V tool the lines. In other words, I want to take off whatever I drew on there. So when I'm done, I don't see the lines that I drew. And if I did that, then I've done exactly what I wanted to do. And so it's given me an opportunity to draw it on there, and unless I have the lines over overlapping here, you won't see them. 
And so I'm going to do the same thing over here. He's looking off to this side. So his right side. And if you have a hard time turning your hand, turn the wood. Hold your hand straight and just turn the wood. So you can see, hopefully, that I've cut in those eyes. Again, they don't have to be the exact same shape or size. They just have to be the same plane. And so this tool right here, my, my flex cut, is sharp enough to get in here and make this cut. But I like to do it with a, with a smaller knife. And so I have a small drake that I use for that one because I can hold it like a pencil. And this little drake has a tiny little blade. I think this is a one inch blade. It's, yeah, right at one inch. That's upside down, isn't it? For those of you that are directionally challenged, that might confuse you. This is a one, a one inch blade. And I like doing that because I can go right in here and I can grip that with like a pencil. And I have, seem to have a little bit more control because then I have two fingers and a thumb if I want it anchored on the wood. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to make my first deep indentation right there where the, where the tear duct goes. And that makes sure that that's going to be t deep there. And then this line here, I'm going to do the same depth. And that allows me to get in there and deepen that deepen that tear duct spot right there and then I'm gonna come out here and lay out this line just draw it straight across be very careful stay in control perpendicular it's got to be perpendicular to the plane of the wood otherwise you're breaking wood off and I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna do this with the other one and I'm gonna bring it down below because the upper eyelid overlaps the lower eyelid I'm gonna come up here and do this one and turn it just slightly. I want to make those lines match if I can. If not, I can always recut them. Now, when I go to do this, we all we have to understand that this eye socket holds an orb called the eye. That eye is round, and it's got to be reflected and rounded here, and it's got to be reflected and rounded there. So we've got to take off wood from this flat plane surface to get that out. So I always I like to start on the outside, and I just lay the the, the tool really sharply flat. I want to I want to focus in a little bit more. There we go. And so from there, you'll be able to see a little bit more of what I'm doing. Uh, if I'm looking at the right eye, where am I at? Right here. So I'm upside down on that because I'm going to do the outside of this one, then I'm going to come back and do the, the outside of the other one. And I'm just going to lay that down in there, and I want to take off that chip out there that makes it look like it indents under there. It really, it really it relieves underneath there. Sorry. So right there is where I just took off wood. If I get that little chip out of there that won't let go. Stop. Do you see that this eye is a little bit rounded from the plane out here to down there? I'm going to do the same thing here, although it's going to be a little bit deeper. So I'm going to come back in here, lay that knife pretty flat. I want to take off a chip at the bottom and a chip, on, chip above that. And so I've made that corner a little bit deeper. Let me take a little bit more off the bottom. And flatten that out. So now you see that tear duct way down in there. I think you can see it, right? Point at it. The tear duct down in there is deeper. And so now because I've made these two lines here and here, these two cuts, I can take my knife and I can take off a little bit to make it round down and round back up. And then I can take off a slice at the top. There's one slice for this side and one slice over here for this side. 
So now that eye looks rounded, and I could certainly round it more. I don't want to round it too much because I don't want him to look like he's got some kind of zombie eye. You know, it's really deep in there and it's really indented. So what I'm trying to do is just make sure that that eye looks like what I want it to look like. It's rounded here or deeper here, deep out here, and rounded top and bottom, back and side to side. If you don't have a small knife, you can certainly do this with a larger knife. It just takes a little more uh, ability to be able to get the room in there to do that. Make sure that you're taking off the flat facets because there's nothing more that'll screw up your eye look is when you go to paint it and you realize there's something in there that shouldn't be there. There's a flat plane that plunges. I see a lot of those trig carvings where they just have a, have a cut out there and they're um, painting over that. And to me, it, it's very flat plane, but it's not the look I'm looking for. I don't want it that flat plane. So anyway, I do that with those eyes just like that. Let me do the other one. Okay, the other side. This one's a little bit smaller. I gotta take that into consideration. Go across the bottom, across the top, go deep, two cuts, take off that corner cut. See that chip come out right there? <coughs> Excuse me. And so now I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna make that cut come around. This cut come around, remember I'm trying to do, I'm doing my best to stay perpendicular to the surface of the wood. It makes it a whole lot easier. I'm gonna cut out that corner. I didn't get it deep enough a minute a moment ago. Here we go. I'm gonna cut out the outside. And I just wanna take a little chip here and a little chip there. And I'm giving the impression that this is rounded, so I've got to take a little bit more out here. It just wants to perplex me this day. I'm going to turn around and I'm see if I can get that splinter out of his eye. He's probably not feeling very comfortable with it in there. Now, I don't know how close you can see on this camera, but right here, there are some facets. Right there's one, and right at the bottom is another one. So what I want to do is try to take off those flat facets. I'll take off a little bit here, a little bit to the outside of that eye. So I don't want to take off much, but I want to take off a little bit. Okay. <coughs> hmm. Frog in my throat. I'm going to round the outside a little bit more because that's where the eye is going to be looking. It's going to be looking over here. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but I rounded that a little bit more. And then I'm going to go along the top where that other flat facet is and try to flatten that out a little bit more. Sharp facet, I said. Man, sharp facet. So now, maybe you can see those two eyes. And that is step number nine. Now there's, an, there's final details that we'll add to this a little bit later. All right, step number 10, carve the forehead and outline the eyebrows. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to this original, sorry, go back to this original number 11 that I had, flex cut number 11. And what I'm going to do is go straight across and I wanna, I want to have eyebrows that look kinda like this. They don't need to be big. Let me draw that in color so you can see it. So I want the eyebrows to kind of look somewhat like this. And if you think drawing on paper is hard, try drawing on wood when it's not all flat. And so that's what I'm going to do in terms of shaping the eye forehead. So the first thing I'm going to do go above that. And, and relieve that. I want that eyebrow sticking out. And so I'm just going above it. And while I'm losing part of my number nine, I have to put it back in. And realize this looks a little different because normally the head would round away from that. But we don't have a lot of that room. So I'm just giving you an idea. 
of what that's going to look like. In the middle of the eyebrows, I have a, I have a separation. I want to leave that separation right there. We'll add more details in there, but I'm separating those eyebrows. So you can't really see them. I took this drawing off over here. And so I've got an eyebrow here and an eyebrow here. Okay. So when I say carve the forehead and outline the eyebrows, that's what I mean. The next step, we're going to carve in the details. So let's go do that to every one of the, one of our carvings, or one of our steps. And you can take this eyebrow, if it bothers you to have that sharp edge, you can take that eyebrow down just a little bit more like that. <coughs> so we'll go over here. I'm going to draw the eyebrow. And I can just, or not draw, we'll carve. I can do that in one cut if I really want to. Again, if you're saving time, I can do that in one cut because I can always come back in here and do some things with the eyebrows to make them bigger, smaller, whatever I want. And you can see that every one of these is going to be slightly different when you carve it because you're not carving the exact same way. Let me relieve that area right between the eyebrow. We'll do a little bit more with it later. Hopefully by now you're getting an idea of what this eye, this face looks like in terms of where the features go, what it's got to look like, and you can see where your eyes on your carving are going to be. The idea behind this was to give you some kind of practice on having a hard time holding on to things today. Give you some practice on how to carve We didn't carve out all the eyes, did we? I skipped a step. My fault. Let's go back and practice eyes a little bit more now that we know what the forehead looks like. You don't. You, I don't think you need me swimming in your soup on that one. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab. I'll just grab a tool. Here's a different kind of eye that I drew it on number nine. Deep in that tear duct. Deep again. Bring it up. Come down. Okay, so I'm going to take that corner out, chip in the corner, see that tear duct down in there, get that piece out of there. Same thing on the outside. And then take the sliver out of the top that you carved and flatten it toward the bottom to make it more round. Say flatten to make it round. Well, you got some sharp edges in there. Do you want to take them off? Okay. Eyes are certainly a place where you can piddle, play, and putter all you want. But at some point, you want to get done. So don't spend you know, six hours on eyes where you only spend an hour on a carving. Get it done. Get in, get after it, get it done. Especially if you got little fuzzies hanging around that you don't really like. I have a lot of people that will spend hours and hours just sitting there picking out little little fuzzy pieces in their carving and you know, sometimes that helps it, sometimes it doesn't. But um, anyway, there's those eyes. Let's do that. These are just going to be, looks like he's, he's, he's squinting. So I'm just going to add wrinkles like his eyes are coming together. Make a match down at the bottom where the tear duct is. He just looks like he's squinting. Now you can get to this point and I can certainly come back and cut in an eye there if I don't like it. But I like this cut because it's just kind of it's just kind of whimsical. It allows you to 
get in here and give him some character. And the great thing about it is I can come in here with a knife and deepen those cuts so it looks like they're all wrinkled and puffied up. I'm not sure if you can see out how I put those wrinkles in there. <coughs> and do that, do that to both of them, both sides. It just adds a little bit. And then we come in and put in the laugh lines on the outside. We would come in here something like this. Add, add a few laugh lines. Make them curl. Like his eyes are squinting. And I put another one down here like his eyes are just... They're just all wrinkled up. And you certainly would want to come in here to the corner and take out a little bit of those as well because that tear duct doesn't go away. It's still there and the depth is too. So you've got to, you've got to leave that there too. Can you see that in there? Sorry. I zoomed in so I forget where I'm at. Do the other side, same way with that knife. Backwards side. <laughs> Maybe I'll figure it out here in a minute. We're just putting those lines in where we've already done it with a V tool. Just giving it a little bit of character there. Okay, let's do this one. Again, deep in the corner. Deep in the corner, make sure those two spots match. Come out here along that line, come out here along that line. You notice I didn't V tool this one because I've done enough of these. Practice with your V tool, it'll help you because it, it with the V tool, it's not a real deep cut. So if you don't like it when you finally see it in 3D rather than in 2D with the drawing, with a V tool, you still got room, you still got time and, and space to go ahead and fix it you haven't cut that deeply with that mini V tool. Got a little deep hole back in there for his eye to be because he's looking this way. And then and then flatten that flatten that eyeball because you don't want a lot of facets in there. You want it rounded but you don't want a lot of facets I leave you some some real strong cuts. Other side. Oh, big tear duct down there. Draw it across. Draw it across there. Come in and make those two cuts match. Take out the outside chip. I got a video on eyes if you want to go over and look at that. It really tells you a simple way. I use a one by one inch stick to carve several different eyes and the, and the structures that make up the eye. And I've heard it's helpful to some people. I'm, I'm sure some other people are, it was a beginner thing, so some, some other people are past that. But it, uh, I, think, I think it'll help some of you if you're struggling with eyes. The CCA is coming out with a new book called The Eyes Have It. It'll be available in September. So for those of you that want to trot on over there and buy that, it'll be available after their Carving the Rockies event in September in Colorado Springs. So this is 2022 if you're watching this at a later time. But this is, uh, this is, this is going to be a big help. The book is going to be a big help for some folks. See those two eyes? One smaller than the other, which means I'm going to see more of the, more of the pupil over here than I am of that one. So you have to take that into consideration. Excuse me. <coughs> Something caught in my throat and I have no idea why. All right, let's do a few more eyes. Just the simple ones that I drew. You can draw complex eyes. You can certainly draw simple eyes. You can paint them on, although for carving purposes, painted eyes don't really give the impact that you want. Because it is true that eyes are the windows to the soul. And so they show so much expression. <laughs> I have to I have to be careful with that because my mind is saying one thing and my eyes are sometimes saying another and people don't know whether I'm disapproving or whether I'm approving or laughing or laughing at them or laughing with them. And so I have to make sure that my eyes are not giving away sometimes my true thoughts because I may be thinking uh, none of that makes any sense, but my look on my face doesn't say that. So 
I gotta, I gotta be careful. If I've ever done that to you, I apologize, especially if you know, you know what I'm doing. I apologize. I won't do it again. I promise. Just outlining what I've already drawn. So I've already drawn these things, and I'm just going back and and making my carving look like what I saw when I was drawing it. Which is not the easiest thing to do. I have I have people who can draw but not carve, and I have people who can carve and not draw, and I have a few friends that can do all of it. We have had a new addition to our club in the last couple of years, and he's just a, he's just a fantastic artist. I, I see his drawings that he does before his carvings, and I just go, I, I'm I'm jealous. I wish I I wish I could do that. I've never been never been a good sketch artist. It's all right. I've not been a good singer either, but uh, still having fun in life. Let's do one a little different. We're going to go down on the on the upper eyelid, kind of like he's going to have droopy eyes. And it, it, you know, it's one thing to draw it and on your wood. It's a it's another thing to carve it, and it's an even more interesting thing to see it be. painted after you draw it. Not the easiest thing to do at all because I've screwed up enough carvings by giving it a bad paint job. But you know I've resurrected a few carvings as well by cleaning it up. But uh, anyway this, there's a lot of times I'll get in there and I'll see oh, I didn't do a very good job and I'll have to go back to the knife and reshape something. It's okay. That's just that just means I gotta fight that battle twice or three times or four times before I before I win it. But I usually do win them, so at least on my carvings anyway, because you know it's my carving and I I determine what it gets to look like, and so I determine when when I'm won and done. Yep, doesn't look like he's very happy, but. Uh, He's all right. He'll he'll get through the day. So I mentioned that book called The Eyes Have It. I'm I'm really looking forward to that book because it's one thing to look at how somebody does it. It's another thing to watch how they do it. It's another one to have all the steps laid out for you. I don't know what the book looks like on the inside, but I'm hoping it'll give you a lot of steps along the way to show you how to do that. Because there's nothing more confusing than to get instructions that don't help. I mean, you ever put together a bicycle from China? There you go. The instructions don't necessarily match the parts. If you're like Ikea, you just do it in pictures. I was in the military early 80s and I had to rent a German vehicle from the motor pool. I was stationed in West Germany at the time. Had to get a, a, a had to get a go down and go to the motor pool and rent out a vehicle, check out a vehicle because I had to go and to another um, to another unit out of our area and pick up a piece of equipment. And they said, make sure you read the instruction manual. So I opened up glove box. There's instruction manual. It was all pictures. There wasn't a single word in. Well, not very many words in there. A little bit later, I asked the guy. I said, why is that? He goes, well. We're trying to make sure everybody understands it, and so, so, so if we wrote it in technical language, for those who don't understand technical language, they might not know how to, how to do this. And I looked through the book, and there was, a, there was instructions on how to break down your M16, how to clean your, your pistol, how to check the oil on this German vehicle and all that. And I just thought it was a little, little strange that there wasn't a written version. It was only the cartoon version but one of the one of the sergeants there at the motor pool said well we've got a lot of people that can't read as well as we want them to especially when we talk about technical stuff so we we give them pictures and hopefully that's enough 
I never did follow up on that, but you'd hope it was enough because you wouldn't want somebody to drive in a vehicle that didn't know how to drive. This is how you shift the four speed. This is how you put the parking brake on. Huh? Mm. All right, we did those eyes. What are we going to do on this last one? Let's make him look like he's angry. Kind of like that. He's, he's, he's grimacing. He, he, he ain't very happy. For this one, I'm going to outline it in the tool. And because he's angry, he's got a lot of skin folded up. So we've got to have sharp cuts on this one. So we'll make them sharpen. Okay, let's do this one. Now, we're not done with these eyes. All we've done is carved in the eyes. We're at step number, what step were we at? Um, we're still on number nine, drawing the eyes you want to carve. No, we skipped it. We jumped ahead to 12. I apologize. We got a little bit out of sequence, but you, you, you'll figure it out. You, you're smart enough to jump steps, I believe. Anyway. Take out it. We don't need it as deep a, 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 a hole in the corners, but we do need this eye to be more flat and more kind of angry so we won't round it quite so much because when you squint and grimace your the skin on your eyes kind of comes more together so it makes it seem like it's not quite as far apart as it would be He won't really look angry till we get done with his eyebrows and his eyelids and whatever. But he don't look he don't look like he's having a good time right now. Anyway. Alright. Let's get back on track. We're back at number 10. Carve the forehead and outline the eyebrows. We did that. Carve the eyebrow details. We skipped that. So I'm I'm only gonna do oh, I'll do a few. So we're back to number carve the eyebrow detail number eleven. So we're we got details on the on the on the uh, details here. Okay, I want to take out right between the eye, eyebrows, just like I did here and here. I want to do that on all of those. I didn't do that one on that one. Cut across there. Didn't do it there. Got a little carried away so my steps are a little bit out of sequence but but by this point you, you're you're in a groove you got it okay going back to 11 I'm gonna carve the eyebrow details now you can argue whether you do it with a soft cut or with a hard cut V tool we could also use a small gouge this is a Drake and if I was guessing I'd say that's a number seven and if I was looking at the size I'd say that's about maybe an eighth of an inch at the most but anyway we're at step number 11 so what I what you can do depends on what you want the eyebrows to look I'll do one of these eat with this one eyebrows are always pointed towards the eye socket so here they're laid down here they're more vertical they're always aiming towards the eye socket or the 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 tear duct so I'm just gonna carve and as I go away I'm gonna lay them down more as I come closer I'm gonna stand them up more so I'm just I don't have to add a whole lot of details you're just you're just giving the impression 
and then if you're going to paint your carving, you're going to paint over it. <laughs> so it doesn't matter so much about everything being perfect. Again, perfection is the enemy of done. And whether you're carving towards the eye or carving away from the eye, it's going to make a difference. I always like to give a little cut right here between the nose and the eyebrow. It's just a little area of separation. It just shows that those areas are separated. And then if you want a real harsh line in there, you can certainly draw it. But I don't need a whole lot in there. I'll do this one with a, with a little small weavy here. And so we're doing this right here. I'm just going to add a few. I don't need a lot. And it argue whether you need short ones. These are not real. You won't have eye, eye, eyebrows that go all the way over here, one long strand of hair. And so add a bunch of little ones that just aim the right way. Even overlap them over the, over the eyelid if you want. We haven't added all those details. We'll add those at the, at, toward the end. But this is just eyebrows that just... You, know, you can make them bushy, you can make them thin. You could do like some people do and they just paint them on. You do what you do. Number nine, we didn't want that one. 10, 11, 11, okay, we went that all the way around. I'm losing my place here for some reason. I'm not uh, real focused. I must not have gotten that metal out there. Let me get it a little bit deeper. Just add add a few details. Add a few details in there. Don't 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 spend a lot of time on eyebrows. They're just not unless the the look you're looking for has to do a lot with the eyebrows. I don't spend a lot of time on eyebrows because they're just not they're not that important. That looks okay. I, I can live with that. Come out here. We'll do a few more. Again, they don't have to be perfect. They just have to be there so you know what it is. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to look at your carving without eyebrows and say, what is that? I think they're going to they're gonna know what it is. And so just like if you're painting a tree, you're not painting every individual leaf. Or on a pine tree, you're not carving every individual needle. You are carving enough to give the impression. You're not trying to make it all about all the leaves. Unless that's what it is. It's a tree and you're showing off the leaves. But I don't, I'm, I'm not going to be a person that gets done with a carving and then spends three more hours on the eyebrows. So, hope you're not disappointed when you see one of my carvings. He didn't spend enough time on them eyebrows. Well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to. I'm just going to make them, I'm scratch them in here. And then occasionally I'm going to take one and make it a little bit different. And again, I'm going to come back in with my little gouge, and I want that separation right back at 11. I want that separation right there between the eyebrow and the bridge of the nose. I just want to take off a little bit. And all I'm doing is showing that the eyebrow is separated from the bridge. And there's a little bit of an indentation there. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing, on I think, on all of these. Come in here and just separate a little bit more right there where the eyebrow is. Come on. Come on. Sometimes you got to sweet talk the wood. Sometimes they don't want to do what you want it to do. And you've got to convince it. Or it'll convince you. Or you just give up and say, nah, it's okay. I'll leave it like that then. Okay. All right. So we're going to carve the eyebrow details, carve the eyelids and eyeballs. We did those. Now we're going to do the bags and the eyes and any wrinkles you wish to add. So we're back at step number 12. So we're right here. I want to add some, some eyebrows because, or not eyebrows, eyelids, because this guy's looking this way. And so he's going to have an eyebrow that kind of arches up that way. And so I'm just going to come in here with a weavy. I'm going to go deep where the nose is. And that's his, and that's his, eye, his eye, eyelid. That's his eyelid right there. 
and bring it over swoop it in towards the swoop it in towards the tear duct see those you can come in here with a knife and make them deeper and I've seen carvers do this and I do this a lot myself I come in here and lay it flat and I want to lay it flat right along that eye eyelid because I want to carve away from it because if I carve towards it I may break it off and then underneath I'm gonna lay that knife down a little bit more and just take out a sliver to make it look a little bit deeper you want to do that on both of them so this one does the same thing I'm gonna lay it, lay it down this one sometimes requires two cuts because as you cut this corner it could come off and then I'm just going to take off a little sliver above that cut and a little sliver over here sometimes you have to cut it out of there anyway that makes those eyebrows eyelids sorry look kind of dangerous So if you got your eye running one particular way, like it's real thin out here and real thick up here, and what you're going to want to do is put your eyeball here, make sure the eyelids match that. This one's the same way. Here's one. We want to make sure it kind of matches. It follows the eye, the eyelid itself. I didn't leave a whole lot of room here so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make it really hard because I want him to look really angry I want that to go deep in there that's what we were gonna do with this last guy remember I'm gonna make it really deep in there so that's step 12 doing the eyelids and again coming in here and making them as, as strong or as soft as you want to make them you can certainly take off as much wood or as little wood as you want. But be real careful around that eyelid because that upper eyelid has a tendency to want to break. Here's this one here. We're going to make it real, real mad. He don't look happy. <laughs> I like him. He's probably saying, why am I number 16? I should be number one. Okay. Now we could certainly flatten out this forehead a little bit more and give him some wrinkles across, but I'm not I'm not so much worried about that. We're worried about the details of the face and getting the getting the stuff where we needed to go. Step any wrinkles oh we're gonna talk about bags. So from step twelve, bags are one of those things that can certainly be overdone. I usually start with a with a with a V uh, gouge, sorry, with a gouge, and what I want to do is just add a bag so this guy being angry his his everything's pulled together he probably wouldn't show a bag this guy with the squinting he probably wouldn't show a bag either but this guy is going to so what I would do is I start out here because what I got I realize I, I didn't oh, 12, 13 sorry we're going the wrong way we need to go this way we're we're looking at we're looking at these guys and the bag is part of the uh, under the bottom eyelid and so if we take that and know that the uh, the bottom eyelid tucks under the upper eyelid so that's going to come out right here and just a small bag right there not a real big one just a little one start with it with a gouge because i want to make it soft and if it works i can always make it harder but once i make it hard it's hard to make it softer on the on the the carving of the bag okay get the marker out of there there's his eye bag I can come in here with it with a knife and I like it but I don't like it enough to leave it there I'm gonna come in here and make a shallow cut and then I'm just gonna take a sliver off underneath because I want that eyelid to go under the other one just like that and I'm gonna take a little sliver here Now, you can certainly make this a really angry bag, but when I'm done with that bag right there, 
what I want to do is give it a few lines, just a few wrinkles. Take the smallest V tool you have, sharpest one, make sure you've stropped it a couple times. And I'm just going to add a few lines to that bag. I don't need much. Right here, right? Sorry. <laughs> 